know, I know he's been getting a lot of compliments uh, throughout throughout this gathering, but but our sound man Chris is just unbelievable. He's just, he's just giving a hundred and twenty percent on on everything, you know. And the last set was was just living proof of that. Everything he just he just sounded like a really well engineered recording out of a studio is what it sounded like. And we're so fortunate to have the guy. All right, well. This is Ted Hoffman, from, he's a veterinarian from Mountain Home. <laughs> and Ted has co-written many, many songs with Randy Houston, and, uh, and uh, he comes up with these wonderful concepts, and, and he talked to me a couple of years ago about, about a song about the, the origin of, of where the American Cowboy came from, and so this, this song, the, the concept just really intrigued me, and so I worked with him on this and chimed in a few verses here and there, and and, uh, and a little bit of guitar work. And uh, what we came up with was uh, was this, was a song that I feel is the most all-encompassing musical history of the American cowboy. Now the big difference: there's cowboys all over the world. There's gauchos, ringers in Australia, vaqueros in in Mexico and you know and uh, the Magyars in uh, in Yugoslavia and, and Hungary and uh, all over the place but none has it captured the world's fascination like the American cowboy and so we decided you know that that, that was a, a pretty good a pretty good goal to work toward in writing this song and sticking with it and it's still in the state of becoming but this is what we've got so far, and uh, I know you're going to like it. Since that first horse was gentle, there were those who won't sell. They live life a horseback to care. Song. They ride in wild places with wide open spaces. They watch like an eagle, they think like a fox. The Cossacks of Russia, Genghis Khan's Mongols. Comanches in his purse, all prayers bond. They danced with the wind, beholding the no man. If they were happy, they'd stay. If not, they drift on. With a dream as bold as her western sky She blended the bravery, the men and man patriots The southerners' courtesy and their fierce pride Although they 
get long before you. Their ghosts won't ignore you. They're part of you now. They look out through your eyes. You're the symbol of all that America offered. And carry the dream with you as you rise. Shares the saddle with you. Take a deep seat and ride. I my cowboy Keep the dream. experiences in the Great Basin in poetry form. I tried to figure out kind of a poem for the Great Basin and uh, had a little experience with uh, wild horses when I lived in Burns. We had uh, one pasture, a BLM pasture, uh, that we shared with the horses. It was uh, just south of Highway 20, about eight miles wide and 13 miles long, and there wasn't any fences in between. But this is a Baxter Black poem called Running Wild Horses. The chase, the chase, the race is on with the Mustangs in the lead, and hot behind the band the cowboys ride like centaurs blurred with speed. The horses' necks are ringing wet from keeping up the pace, and tears cut tracks into the dust upon the rider's face. The rank old mare sniffs out the trail while never breaking stride, and from behind the wranglers come, relentless on they ride, until the canyon walls close in and punch him through the gap, where bottled up they paw and watch the cowboy shut the trap. And that's the way it's been out west since Cortez turned them loose. We fed the dinks and with the herd and we kept an easy truce. But someone said they'd all die off if cowboys had their way. So they outlawed running horses, but who am I to say? Hey, I'm getting older, boys, and though I miss the chase. His time like mine has come and gone. We're both so out of place. The glamour of our way of life belies our common fate. I'm living off my pension check, and he's a ward of state. But what a time when he and I ran hard across the land, me breathing heavy down his neck, him wearing no man's brand. No papers gave us ownership to haul the ground we trod, but it belonged to him and me. As sure as there's a God. And if I could, I'd wish for him and for myself likewise to finally cross the great divide away from prying eyes. So he could out there, he could die with dignity out there where he lived running free and coyotes chew his moldered bones, a fitting epilogue 
instead of smashed up in a can for someone's townhouse dog. Thank you. Great, Tommy Patton. Wonderful poet. Uh, our next performer is a musical historian. He goes around and, and, and digs up old songs, and he's, he's found some wonderful songs about the Great Basin. And uh, his name is Bill Childs. He's certainly no stranger to you, one of the best voices and guitar players in Cowboy Poets of Idaho. Bill Childs. Thanks, Wayne. What a pleasure and an honor to share the stage with such great, great poets and musicians. Just to be asked to be on Wayne's stages, let me tell you, quite an honor. And Wayne and I have been around. We've been, we've done Texas and Southern California and Arizona and Colorado. We've done all the big cities where all of them live. And you're actually hearing the best that there is in the West right here. Honestly, you, you really are. And uh, most people don't even know it, <laughs> but we travel around. Well, this next song right here, I'm, I'm from Idaho Falls, so I'm from the other end of the valley, way up there by Yellowstone. And, but that is still part of the Great Basin. It's just the other end of it. And uh, this song comes from your end of it, down here in Hawaii uh, County, which uh, I love to hear poetry about Hawaii. It's great, great country. If you've ever looked at a map, it's huge county. Huge country, a lot of gold, a lot of silver, and a lot of loneliness, and it's very spiritual and very important to the Indians. There was a lady that really, really lived, and she came out here and she did it all on her own about the 1880s. This is a little song about her. There was a certain lady who lived some time ago and earned a reputation in the state of Idaho. She ran a band of horses, and the diamond was her brand. At the foot of the Owyhee Mountains, a mighty rugged piece of land. She only hired top cowboys to ride in tend this land. And she rode there among them, and ruled with an iron hand. She shipped horses to the gold fields, to the U.S. Cavalry. Auctioned them off in Omaha, St. Louis, Sioux City. She was the Queen of Diamonds, and Keely Wilkins was her name. From a forty dollar filly, she worked her way to fame. For good horses and square dealings, she was known throughout the West. They said, see the Queen of Diamonds, if you want the very best. She only hired top cowboys, ride and tend this land. And she rode there among them, and ruled with an iron hand. And they saw she was a beauty, and she raised quite a stir. When all those eastern earsmen would catch a glimpse of her. Now Kitty never did marry, though the one man her heart had stolen. But she lost him in a shooting over some old water hole. Now my Blackford and Idaho remembers her, for she's earned her place of fame. She was the queen of diamonds, and Kitty Wilkins was her name. She was the queen of diamonds, and Kitty Wilkins was her name. From a forty dollar filly, she worked her way to fame. For good horses and square dealings, she was known throughout the West. They said, see the queen of diamonds, if you want the very best. She was the queen of diamonds, and Kitty Wilkins was her name. From a forty dollar filly, she worked her way to fame. For good horses and square dealings, she was known throughout the West. They said, see the queen of diamonds, if you want the very best. She 
was the Queen of Diamonds, and Kitty Wilkins was her name. I almost walked off the stage and dragged the PA system with me last night. No, I'm telling everybody, oh, make sure you unplug. But anyway, uh, I'm sure everybody's familiar with Brian Dilworth. He's very instrumental in organizing this gathering. And he's also. And I'm really glad he could, he could be with us today. And, uh, and so. He's, he's going to share, uh, he's a great reciter and a fountain of knowledge on classic cowboy poems. Brian Dilworth. Thank you, Wayne. How many were here this morning? <laughs> About everybody, it looks like. Uh, yeah, I was trying to think of some great basin poems, and I think I did both of the ones that were written by great basin or great basin cowboys this morning. But I'll do one of them again. The horse trade that uh, was written by Sonny Hancock, who was on the Eastern Oregon part of the Great Basin. I traded for a horse one time. He wouldn't take no beauty prize, just a great big long geared blue roan gilding. Not too bad for weight and size. Now I had to ride some tough old circles and this trader guaranteed that this horse would show me lots of country and not need too much rest or feed. He said, now this ain't no kid's horse, but he'll pack you up the creek. He will hop up on some occasions and he has been known to kick. Now, I wouldn't trade him to just anyone without feeling some remorse, but if you're a sure enough cowpuncher, mister, this is your kind of horse. Well, I stepped upon the horse next morning, he began to buck and ball. Now, that trader maybe hadn't lied none, but he hadn't told at all, because we sure tore up the country where he threw that equine fit. I was running out of handholds by the time he finally quit. I guess that sort of set a pattern. Things just never seemed to change. Oh, I showed him lots of country, every corner of the range, but every time I rode that bugger, man, he kept me sitting tight. I knew I'd have to make at least three bronc rides before he'd pack me home at night, which would have been okay with lots of horses that I know, but this old pony had my number. I just barely got him rode. And the thing that really spooked me and put a damper in my pride was that he was learning how to buck faster, not learning how to ride. <laughs> well, I rode to the camp one evening, it's getting pretty late, and there's this gray horse in the corral and a saddle there by the gate. I looked that gray horse over and I sure liked what I seen, and this kid showed up from around the barn, he looked to be about 16. He said he lamed that gray that morning coming down off granite grade and he wondered if I had a horse I'd maybe like to trade. He said he didn't have the time to stop and rest and let him heal, so since beggars can't be choosy, he'd take most any kind of deal. Well, when it comes to trading horses, why most anything is fair, so I traded him that blue roan horse for that gray horse that in there. Then my conscience got to hurting when I thought of what I did to trade a fly-blown dink like that off to a little wet-nosed kid. So next morning after breakfast, I tells him, listen, lad, if you want to know the truth, that trade to me last night was bad. That blue horse, he's a bad one. Bad as any horse you'll see, he'll strike, he'll kick, he'll stampede. He's a sorry SOB. It's all I can do to ride him and to tell it to you straight. I think you'd be awful lucky just to ride him past the gate. Now I've got two or three old horses out there in that saddle bunch. They ain't got too much going for them. But I kind of got a hunch they'll get you where you're going if you just don't crowd, crowd them none. But damn, I hate to see you ride that blue roan booger, son. Well, he said I told you there last night I'd take most any kind of trade and I appreciate you telling me the bad mistake I made. But my old daddy told me when you're trading, no matter how you feel, even if you take a whooping, a deal is still a deal. You say he's got lots of travel and he's not too bad for speed. Well, sir, 
I'm kind of in a tight, and that's exactly what I need. I traded for him fair and square, and damn his blue roan hide when I ride out here this morning. That's the horse I'm going to ride. Well, I watched him cinching up his saddle, and he pulled his hat way down, and he stepped up in that reggae like he was riding off to town. He put both spurs up in the shoulders and sent that blue roan hair up flying and tipped his head way back and screamed just like a hungry mountain lion. Well, I've heard lots of stories about that bucking horse ballet. I've heard of poetry in motion, but the ride I seen that day just plumb defied description, though I still can see it plain. Like it happened in slow motion, it was branded on my brain. I don't think I could explain it to you even if I tried. The only thing that I can say is by the saints that kid could ride. He sat up on there all relaxed like he was lying home in bed and every jump that pony took, the kid was half a jump ahead. When it was over, I decided I could learn a few things still and I told him, son, I'm sorry I misjudged your riding skill. He said, shucks, that's okay, mister, as he started on his way. But if you think this horse can buck, don't put your saddle on that gray. <laughs> Sunny hand. sometimes. Okay, yeah, um, I was part of the, of the Idaho Songs Project. It's been, uh, we've, we've uh, me and a, and a musical historian out of Boise, uh, Gary Eller, have put out uh, three CDs by now of a whole bunch of different Idaho songwriters, uh, mostly cataloging uh, pre-radio um, Idaho music, music that was pretty much, pretty much about Idaho, and uh, and so this is this is a song that, that I wrote for the for the current project that uh, that we just finished. It's called "Badasses and Dad Disasters of Early Idaho," and it, it's mostly about Idaho history and events in Idaho that happened of historical interest that nobody had ever written a poem or a song about, and uh, and there are. Uh, and I, and I wrote one poem and, uh, and two different songs about that. And this is the shortest one that's on there, because if I did the other two, I'd take up way, much, way too much time for my compadres here. So this is, uh, this is a song about uh, an African, an African uh, orphan who was brought to the United States by the Talbot family, and they settled in the Salt Lake Valley, and he became the first casualty recorded casualty of the sheep wars, or the cattle sheep wars in southern Idaho that happened down around Oakley and Albion in those days, of the 1880s. On a moonlit night in Oakley, a ghostly marker glow In a well-kept cemetery, it covers up the bone of a dark-skinned son of Africa who learned to ride and wrangle. He lived out here among us. His name was Gobo Fango. His dying outcast mother left her baby in a tree who was found and kept from starving by the Talbot family. They took him to America, get him from the slavers, and out to Salt Lake Valley, where the kindly Mormons raised him. Gobo Fango was a shepherd, Gobo Fango was a man, and Gobo Fango wondered what his place was in this band. He lived with white skinned people beneath his Wasatch range. He was a love of many people, and he proudly kept his name. From his friend, the hunter family, he learned the shepherd's trade. A share of lambs for 
sure his own dirt was Gobo's only pay. He had little use for money, and most of it he saved. What he valued most of all was the green grass of the rain. When the children saw him coming behind a white face band, they'd run ahead to greet him and they'd take him by the hand. They'd laugh and play among them around the shearing sheds. They'd sit upon his lap and curl the dark bowl of his head. But the Civil War was ending and a new one had begun Out on the western ranges where false fields had been spun Now the grazing of the woolies could ruin all the land And the ones who ran the cow believed it to a man hot-headed nature, it could have been foreseen that this fight led to shoot wherever the grass was green. And for Gobo it was risky for a man whose skin was brown to be caught alone on Goose Creek, his blood could soak the ground. Frank Betke was a cowman who was checking on his herd. When he saw Gobo's wagon, gave his horse the spur. And in a fit of anger, he shot poor Gobo down. Left him there for dead as he headed off to town. But Gobo wasn't done yet, he stumbled and he crawled. It truly was a miracle, he could move at all. Leaving red streaks on the safe brush from his many bullet wounds. Till he reached Paul Matthews' homestead, the kindly folks he knew. Well, he only lived a short time, but the tale that he told was of a brutal murder that happened unprovoked. He said a man approached him, smiling in the morning sun. And when he reached to shake his hand, the other held a gun. Gobo died a few days later in the company of friends who knew him as a kind man. And when his will was read, he left all that he'd earned to the welfare of the poor. And this loyal, dark skinned shepherd would see the rain no more. Some still say that the cowman fired in self-defense With the sights of Gobo's rifle, no man would have done less To this day it's still debated, but the proof has long since passed To that Oakley Cemetery, buried deep beneath the grass If you're ever down in Oakley, with its hell-kept coward ground Take some time to look, and his marker will be found. Go out where sheep are grazing, and look amongst the tangles, and pick some wild flowers for the great Gobo Fango. Gobo Fango was a shepherd, Gobo Fango was a man. And Gobo Fango wondered what his place was in this land. He lived with white-skinned people beneath the Wasatch Range. He was loved by many people, and he proudly kept his name. Thank you. I've got a couple copies left. They didn't sell my hotcakes. I've got a couple copies left of that. It's a booklet and CD combination. The CD is tucked in a little pocket in the last page of the, of the book. And, and there's not only the, the songs that are on there, there's uh, 
uh, what I think 18, 18 different songs, poems, uh, all included in this that are on the CD. And also there's a whole lot of uh, Idaho history, old photographs and drawings and old newspaper articles that, that cover the things that we wrote about in the Idaho Songs Project. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really worthwhile investment for only 15 bucks. But anyway, um, that said, uh, our next performer is my good friend Ted Hoffman, who's going to, uh, okay, he's going to do a, a song. Sometimes, sometimes this stuff we do with poetry form and sometimes it's songs, but so he's going to do another one for you here. Yeah, you did. Uh, I wrote this song because the, there's some words that have always been magical to me. And one of them is, or one set of them is, this is still the West. And uh, if you've ever been around when, you, when those words have come out, usually they're shouted. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you have to duck. It generally means uh, we're not going by the law or the regulation. We're going to do whatever's right or we're going to follow the code instead. And uh, it's usually a fairly exciting time. And uh, I thought I'd write a song about it. Indians and mountain men, cowboys and settlers, we owe our thanks to them, for this is still the West. Their spirit remains today, and I bet they'd say, get that government out of the way, this is still the West. Reputations can't be bought, your hands shake at better hold. That's the way our kids are taught, cause this is still the West. It was a harsh land of promise that challenged everyone, showed where a man stood, how a horse could run, the room to be a legend. For a just disappear Your freedom has inspired us Down through the years And we're why this is still the West Do you tip your hat to the ladies? Take it off for the flag? I hear that's a must, not a maybe This is still the West Bareback bronks are kicking the beat. Oh, say, can you see? Rodeo queens are coming out of lope. This is still the West. I'm not talking about Denver or San Francisco by the sea. You don't know. Come to Bruno, Burns, or Shoshone. That's where this is still the West. If you see a stranger broke down, you do what you can do. It's a long way to town, and this is still the West. There's someone's daughter or son, might even be yours. You help yourself when you help someone, this is still the West. If it's trouble that they're looking for, I can help them find it. Look down the barrel of this 44, cause this is still the West. It was a harsh land of promise that challenged everyone. Showed where a man stood, how a horse could run. Room to be a legend. For to just disappear, your freedom has inspired us down through the years. And we're why this is still the West. You know, I'm so glad this is still the West. Because if it wasn't, I'd have to move somewhere else. But there's the rub. 
where would I go? Well, this isn't still the West. This is the only place that was the West. Well, you see the problem. Unfortunately, there's still people who live those Western ways here. People who still sing about it. People who still come to listen to people sing about it. That's why I know I'm right when I say, we're why. This is still the West. Tommy Patton back up here for another good poem. Well, here's a, a poem I don't think anybody has heard before because I just wrote it Tuesday. Um, you know, uh, talking about the Great Basin, why uh, every town you go to has got a, a cemetery. Back in the old days, it uh, was kind of called Boot Hill. And that's the name of this poem, Boot Hill. Now, there were very few cowboys that wanted to die with their boots on. But there were a lot of hands that did that very thing back in the days of young. Sometimes in the old days, a gunfight was more than just a game. And that's how Boot Hill got its name. Very few cowboys had what you call a Christian burial. Uh, trailing steers up north was more like a test of survival. But things have changed, and nowadays you can plan ahead as to what kind of a marker you want standing on your head. And you can, you know, what color and the quality of the casket. And do the flowers need to be in a vase or a basket? Why, just the other day my wife was talking about the end and hoping that there'd be more than a few to call a friend. She talked about prayers and song and a life sketch by her son John, and other talks of love and praise by her sons Mike and Don. And then the question, what was to be the closing song? And here the discussion became heated and long. Now, I've had this old woman nearly 60 years, our life has been full of fun, laughter, joy, and tears. It's taken her this long to train and to get me broke. This has been a long-term deal, not just a puff of smoke. And then with a grin, I said, how about that old Roy Clark song? Thank God and Greyhound, she's gone. Thank you. All right, like, you know, like I said about Bill Childs, he's kind of a musical historian, and I like to tease him about being a, an Idaho musical, Indiana Jones, because, he, you know, he, he really digs up these beautiful old songs, and I think he's going to do one for you now. Bill Childs. Thanks, Wayne. I found this in a little town. Anybody ever know, does anybody know where Firth, Idaho is? Right on. Well, there's a little place right outside of Firth called Basalt. And it's not basalt, it's basalt. That's right. And it's between, this is between Firth and Shelley. And uh, I had a, I, I was doing a show and this lady come up to me and she says, my husband knows every Jimmy Rogers song that was ever written. And you've got, and he was in his 90s. And you've got to come out to my place and you've got to hear these recordings I've got. Said, no problem, that's what I do. So I drove out there to Bay Salt. My grandparents, or my mom was raised in Firth, so it wasn't a real big deal, and we're all related. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Once you're from there, you're all related. So I went out there, and uh, she put this recording on. And this was recorded. I do not know who wrote it. She did, and they've all passed on. And all she had was a cassette. And it was a cassette of a 45 that was made in about 1958 at the old Green Tea in Pocatello. If you remember where the Green Tea was, the old Honky Tonk. And his name was Jimmy Heath. And he was a singer there back in the late 50s, early 60s. And he took this song and he went into the local Five and Dime. And at that time, you could still go in there and make a recording on an RCA uh, 
write a letter, make a song. You paid a quarter and you got a 45 out of the deal and you sent it off to your sons in the military. You could do a letter or you could read whatever. And so she had a tape, a cassette recording of this old 45. I don't know who wrote it. All I know is the guy who sang it. His name is Jimmy Heath. And I've never heard it before and I've never heard it since. And it is an awesome song. Out among the Rockies where the white syringas grow there's a winding trail among the pines of Idaho a trail that leads to heaven and an angel fair and free is watching and waiting for me no others richer far they've wished upon her star she waits for one who strayed and played her part. But now my random trail has led me back to her and will be wed to the strains of the Idaho Waltz. Out among the Rockies where the white syringas grow. Among the pines of Idaho, a trail that leads to heaven, and an angel fair and free is watching and waiting for me. Though others richer far, they've wished upon her star. She waits for one who strays. Classic poem from another great basin cowboy, Brian Dilworth. Bill is the reason that I recite instead of sing. <laughs> that voice just <laughs> gets me. I'll do it, Badger Clark poem. He's not really a great basin cowboy, but he was a cowboy from North Dakota that actually cowboyed in Arizona and part of the Great Basin called Married Man. There's an old part of mine that sits by his door and watches the evening skies. He sat there a thousand evenings before and I reckon he will till he dies, poor feller. I reckon he will till he dies and he hears on the dim, quiet air far cattle that call and crickets that cheep and his woman singing his kid to sleep and the creak of a rock of eye chair while we used to camp when the last light would fail and the east wasn't white when we'd start but now my friend's deaf to the call of the trail and the song of the restless heart poor feller the song of the restless heart that you hear on the wind from the dawn. He left it with all the good free-footed things for a slow little song that a tired woman sings and a smoke when his dry day is done. While well, I rode in and told him of lands that were strange, where I'd ridden from glory to dread. And he gives me the news of his little old range and the cute things his kid had said. Poor feller. The cute things his kid had said in the way six-year Billy could ride. And the dark would creep in from the gray chaparral, and his woman would hum. And I pitied my pal, because I thought of him like he had died. Oh, he rides in old circles. He looks at old sights. His life is as flat as a pond. He loves that old skyline he watches at nights. But he don't seem to care for beyond, poor feller. He don't seem to care for beyond or the room he can find there for joy. Ain't you ever uneasy? I asked him one day. 
He just smiled at me in a pitying way as he braided a quirk for his boy. Well, he preaches I ought to fold up my wings that even wild geese find a nest that women and a woman are different things. And a saddle nap isn't a rest. Oh, he's more for the rest in the shade and he's less for the wind in the fight. Yet, out in strange hills, when those blue shadows rise, and I'm tired of the wind and the sun in my eyes, I wonder if maybe he's right. Oh, I've quartered the wind, and I've followed her free from the snows that the north stars have kissed to the heave and the dip of the wavy old sea. Yet I reckon there's something I've missed. Yes, maybe there's something I've missed, and it might be more than I've won. Just a door of my own when the blue shadows creep and a woman singing my son to sleep when I'm tired of the wind and the sun. Charles Badger Clark. All right, Ted Hoffman, front and center. <laughs> Did I wake you? I'm sorry. I'm not sure if this is a poem or a song. And when I'm done, you may not be sure <laughs> Maybe we'll take a vote and then I'll know. That's it. The polls are open. It's hard at 20 below. It's time for them to go. To the old man and the kid and the new guy. Are bumbled up, saddled up, riding out. The first blush of today's sky. Three horsemen in a row. Taking turns, breaking snow. They come to that first gate and look back at the wind filling in their tracks. They're all mounted on tough horses, with lots of morning bucks still left in their backs. The old man says, I'll get it. The kid says, no, that gate's mine. The new guy just gets on down and says, I believe you put me on for the winter time for this. Three of them were right. Those cowboys, that's quite a sight. The kid snubbed his McCarty up close while the new guy climbed back on. Things were fine for a time as they walked along. As soon as they started to trot, that big grown bogged his head and squealed. Couldn't pick him up with mittens on. That horse remembered how good it feels. Bucked the new guy off, and he hung up by his felt pack boot. And when he drug it past the kid, well then his horse broke in two. Oh yeah, things were getting western. I couldn't roll over with all that snow, but it did soften up his ride. That roan, though, was headed for rocks and brush that were going to take off a lot more than his hide. The old man eased his horse into a gallop. He'd been in the back. Got as close as he dared, swung through, and gently gathered up his slack. He just wanted to slow him down Without turning or spinning round Well that let the new guy kick himself free 
He just lay there taking inventory. Head, neck, and arms, and legs, all where they should be. The kid had made his ride. He trotted back about the time the new guy stood. Then he choused that room around the old man till the sweat was on him good. Then he gathered him in close again, found the new guy flying back on. And this time he behaved like a bridle horse, even when they trotted right along. The old man asked, how do you feel? The new guy replied, grateful. Thanks for catching my horse. Nobody had seen the old man take his rope down back at that gate. Nobody had seen him schooling his horse all that way. Nobody heard the prayer on his lips when he swung that loop all alone. Nobody heard him whisper to the wrong. He made it look so easy to do. But he'd spent a lifetime building that loop. Three horsemen in a row. minutes left and, uh, and I'd like to tell you about uh, what's going on here November 7th to the 9th in Rupert, uh, Idaho. We're having the, uh, the 15th annual Diamond Field Jack Gathering there in the old Wilson Theater in Rupert. It's a beautiful old theater and it's 95% uh, it's restored. When we first started having cowboy poetry gatherings back, back in about 96, 97, I can't remember which, but the place, the wind was blowing through the place. It was a candidate for the wrecking ball. But it's such a beautiful old historical building and uh, and so we needed a home because before that we <laughs> we were holding gatherings. The first gathering we held was at the sail ring in Burley. You know, we were, the flies were even worse than this. <laughs> they were all over the place and there was, you know, that was the first year and it was actually hot in November. The second year, we held it there again, but you know how sail rings are. I mean, the you know, the, the drafty, and, and there was no nothing to keep the cold air out, so everybody was kind of huddled around the stove, you know, trying to keep warm and listen to the poetry. But we still had fun. But uh, and after that, they you know they they you know there was other things going on in the sail ring, so we couldn't hold it there. So then we uh, then uh, we held it at. Uh, at a little bitty Christian church there for a while, and uh, you know, and then and, uh, and that petered out. So we were looking for a home. We were desperate, and so we wound up uh, uh, in an old clothing store that was, was all you know, clothed down and ratty, a ratty old place. And that was the last place. And then we were we tried the National Guard armory and, and everything else we could. We scoured the countryside looking for a home there, and. Uh, Finally, Bill Ramsey, bless his, bless his heart, he's passed away now. He was the one that started the Burley Gathering. And, and Bill said, well, there's, there's a theater that they're restoring up in, in Rupert. Uh, we, we could probably do a, do a program there if we talked to him. So we did. We went and talked to him, and they were all enthused. You know, the Renaissance Arts Center, which is based in Wendell, um, you know, re at restoring a lot of old buildings, and they decided they'd take on the project of restoring that old theater. And so they, uh, they they welcomed us with open arms, and even though the plaster was falling off the walls and uh, the the windows were shattered and in a lot of places held together with duct tape, and uh, you know, and but still we we started having we were grateful to have it there, and we had we held our gathering there ever since the last 15 years at least, and uh, and now 
That place is 95% restored. It's a beautiful old building. It's shaped like a cheese box. It's a uh, it's triangular-shaped building right on the northwest corner of Rupert Square. And, uh, and last year, last year, uh, Ted Hoffman, Ted, put the put the idea in my head about uh, he said, we're so close to Veterans Day we need to do more to honor the veterans and I sure couldn't argue with that and so I said I asked Ted if he wanted to uh, host uh, an hour program Saturday afternoon at two o'clock uh, honoring the veterans and the response from the from the uh, the poets and, and the, the participants and, you know, the entertainers there were just overwhelming, you know. Everybody had a really good patriotic poem to do in that theater. And so, you know, and we, we're going to continue on that tradition. And uh, this year, Ted's going to be in contact with the VFW and, uh, and we're going to really, really get some stuff done honoring our veterans, you know. And that'll be... Uh, so, you know, mark your calendars, tell your friends that the Diamond Field Jack Cowboy Poetry Gathering is alive and well, and it'll be starting at uh, November 7th through the 9th. There will be two stages, one on the upstairs, where you'll be entertaining the craft fair, and one down below in the auditorium, where, where you know, which is the main auditorium, and we'll be, uh, we'll be entertaining uh, both, both stages throughout the daytime. And the night show, the night show warm-up will start at 6.30, and, uh, and the main show will start at 7, 7.30, uh, both Friday and Saturday. Plus, we're going to have Cowboy Church on Sunday, starting at 11 o'clock in the theater. So, you know, mark your calendars. It's, it's a really good gathering, and, uh, and uh, Saturday night show is, is really, really good. We've got Leo Bagley and Sam Delu usually host that one, MC it, and... And it turns out to be a real hoot. And the Friday sh Friday night show, myself and Sam Matthias will be will be emceeing that one. And we're just going to have uh, 24 top CPI entertainers attending. So be sure to mark your calendar for that. And uh, and thanks so much for uh, for listening to this session. I'd like to thank Ted Hoffman, Tommy Patton, Bill Childs, and Brian Dilworth for helping me share the fun of uh, Great Basin Cowboys. And thank you so much for attending. We'll see you later. Is this on? They wanted me to announce that they are going to raffle that beautiful quilt with all of our beautiful faces on there uh, right after uh, the pre-show tonight, which is going to start at 6 o'clock in one hour. It'll be an auction. They're going to auction that quilt off back there, so...